Hello, today I'm going to be making another one of these little animal sculptures that I stick into a rock. I did one of these recently about a sea serpent. Today I'm going to be making a sheep or a ram. I was in two minds about the design of the feet for this ram. Uh, my original idea was to try and actually forge like a hoof, but I think um, I was then thinking about more of an artistic style of a foot and so just a simple scroll on the end but I think what I'm actually going to do is merge the two together and so do a scroll which has like a split in the end so it looks a bit more hoof like than just a simple scroll but it's not quite a hoof we've got a bit more artisticness in there. I've got a piece of six mil round in the fire so they are going to be skinny legs but I think that's going to add to the whole character of the piece in that we have a big rock, a big head, and then four little skinny legs, short skinny legs sticking out underneath it. I'll just put a really simple one-sided taper on the end to start off with. Make sure it's nice and round on the corners. Now I'll take a file and put a V groove in the end to show sort of like the hoof. I've got a triangular file, so I'll come on in the middle of this piece. Don't think it needs much really, just a little V groove in the end. And just put a little scroll in the end. For the tail, I'm going to go for a little ball, basically, on the end of a rod. Uh, but to do that, I'm going to do a forge welded collar. So I've got a half round swage here, so I can put a piece of 8 mil round in there, Forge it into it, making it half round, wrap that up into a circle for a collar, and then forge weld that onto a 10mm bar, and then manipulate that a bit more just to refine the shape into a nice sphere on the end of that 10mm bar. You'll see with the collar, I've left a little gap in between the two ends. So when I cut it, there'll be a gap. And that's so that as I'm forging on it, the ends aren't going to contact on each other. Because if they do that, you, you run the risk of them pushing out against contacting the steel that you're trying to weld it to. And so there's going to be an inclusion there, an air gap. So it's not going to weld. So to prevent that, we've got to leave a gap in the collar itself and then as we're forge welding it the gap will close as we're moving the material it should close up and then we can just weld the seam and it'll look like it's one piece so you see we've just got a little gap and the end is just slightly poking through so we can now take a forge welding heat and weld it in our little hardy block as well to keep to retain that nice round edge so we, we've already got the round on the outside for the the sphere
I've got the ball forged on the end pretty neatly. I might clean it up a little bit with some files, but I want to uh, draw down the section of material behind the ball, as obviously I've got to drill a hole into the rock to then glue the, the ball itself, the tail, in. But I don't really want to be doing it, doing a 10 mil hole, so I'll draw it down some as best I can uh, to a nice a round taper, probably about six mil round or maybe eight mil round. I don't know, it depends on how thin I can go. Um, and then that'll be the tail done. I will just clean up that transition between the ball and the stem there with some files, because it's quite hard to get in there with a hammer. So I'll just do it with some files, get it nice and neat, and then we can cut it off the bar and that's this piece done. I'm going to forge out a ram's head, but I've shown this process quite a few times and I've done lots of other animal heads and they're all very similar processes really. So I'm going to try and make it into a bit more of an entertaining montage rather than just me doing it step by step and telling you what I'm doing. Um, I will tell you what I'm doing to start off with, but I've made a mark here, two and a half inches, so I can section off the horns, split the horns with an angle grinder and then we can begin to actually forge out the head itself. Here's the rock that I'm going to be using and I've polished up all of the feet and the tail and the head uh, but I think I'm going to do the feet first, so not the tail actually, I'm going to get all of the feet glued in first then we can flip it over and glue the head and the tail in. Um, so I've got to drill some holes and then resin all of these feet in. I've mixed up some epoxy and this is the stuff that I actually use to resin railings in. So it should be a uh, pretty strong stuff. So I'll get a bit on the end of uh, one of these feet. 
Shove it down in the hole. Try to get some in the hole as well. You see how it sort of splurged out the sides. I'm just going to leave that until it's set and then we can chisel it off. It's the best way to deal with it really. Rather than trying to tidy it up now, we can just get it off of there later. I'll leave that to set, then we can flip it over and put the head and the tail in. I ended up putting the tail in as well, as I let it set this way up so all the legs would set level and even. It's wobbling there because the anvil's not quite flat. Uh, but if I flip it over, and I've got a little chisel, so hopefully we can just try and chisel off this excess to leave a nice flush, uh, flush transition between the rock and the actual legs. There we are, they're nice and flush now. I think that's the best way to do it really, just to l let it sort of splurge out of the holes and then chisel it back afterwards and you get a nice flush transition. There's a bit of sort of discoloration around it, but I, I can go over that with some sandpaper just to get rid of that sort of colour there and neaten it all up a little bit more just carefully. Uh, but I'll mix up some more and then we can glue the head in. I've cut the head off and given it a clear coat of lacquer. Um, I've done that on all of these pieces. So that's the, the sort of finish to stop them rusting is a clear lacquer. And I'll mix up this epoxy and then just glue the head in. There we go. I'll just leave that to set and then obviously chisel that off, but that's it. This is quite a fun little thing to have a go at making. There's a few different techniques that I've used to actually make it. So there's a bit of forge welding obviously in the tail and then a bit of scroll work on the feet. Maybe that didn't work out quite as well as I thought it was going to. They sort of look like just really long toenails on the end of the feet, but hey, I, th I think they look all right. Maybe I should have just done, just left them with a, a simple scroll on the bottom of the feet there. Also, maybe they're a little bit too long. I think it would have looked better if the legs were slightly shorter. So it was sort of, you know, this big body and then just four little tiny legs sticking out. Of course, going back to the techniques, there's then all of the, the punching and uh, manipulating the volumes in the face to actually create the ram's head. And then again, a bit of a scroll on the horns. The horns aren't quite, you know, they're not a scroll as such as they're more of like a really tight scroll and then it opens up as they come out of the head and then really tight at the bottom. I really enjoyed making this piece. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me make it. I have been liking uh, working with both steel and stone. So I did that ser uh, sea serpent sculpture a little while ago, which I'll link somewhere about the place. If you haven't watched that video, that was uh, a good one. And I did a tongue coming out of the, the dragon's head. I think that was really cool. And I want to go back to that as well at some point. I want to do like a, a big sculpture with lots of dragon's heads on and all different facial features. Because I find that I can get sort of stuck into a rhythm with making these things, you know, when I'm making a batch of bottle openers or something, when I'm doing the heads, I try to get them all to look the same, but that might not necessarily be the best option. You know, I think each one should have a bit of character. So I want to explore that a little bit more in making the, the heads. So ram's heads, dragon's heads, whatever, doing different facial features and having a tongue and different horns and, you know, creating their own characteristics. So my idea for that is to create this sculpture uh, with lots of different heads on and they're all sort of, you know, interacting with each other almost. So we can have like, you know, one biting another one or I don't know. I think, I think that's a, a cool idea, which I want to work on and eventually will create something. Anyway, I'm blubbering on. Let's just leave it there for this video and I'll see you on the next one.